Hey, good morning, good uh, day, good afternoon, good night, good evening, uh, wherever you are. Um, this is kind of night here, actually, so we'll make this pretty quick. This is a uh, Banana Bites case um, done in conjunction with uh, Eris Nosek, uh, basically about balloons. It's about how to use balloons in various capacities for various reasons. And uh, it's this, it's a classic ACOM bleed. Here's your small ACOM right here. Now you notice that there's some going on. Basically, this is an old, this, this person has an old left carotid occlusion that's known. The left hemisphere essentially depends on this ACOM complex, which is, you know, is a setup for issues down the road with this kind of aneurysm, the PCOM ain't doing too much. This is the working projection view. This is not really a case about clipping versus coiling. We had both options. We figured we'd do uh, some endovascular stuff first, uh, but whatever you do, you have to preserve that ACOM. The ACOM complex is what the left hemisphere needs. We did this. Um, it would have been perfectly fine in a, any other situation, but you can see how this is like encroaching on the ACOM here, even without the detachment zone. Not sitting too well. This is how it should sit. It's not sitting like that, so we pull it out because you gotta get this one perfect. Now we try this. Um, it's a balloon, a balloon assisted coiling. Um, it's an endangered species of sorts um, in various ways. I think it's like an art that's being slowly lost and you really can use this, you know, whatever. Like Komanechi will do fine. Um, most cases, I think it's perfectly reasonable here personal preference in this particular case, rupture, small ACOM. That's what we did. Uh, it's a three by 10 transform. You see how the coils are sitting really nicely. The balloon is pushing them up into the aneurysm. The balloon is really like outlining the ACOM complex when it's inflated. This is the end. Looks, I think it looks really good, uh, honestly, for a, a balloon assisted coiling in this situation. So, <laughs> this is a venous phase volume rendered image bilateral opacification from, you know, by hemispheric contrast. Uh, the position from the right carotid, we love that. Uh, this is five days later, as expected. There's uh, like really bad spasm and um, we have a BTO page, which you're welcome to take a look at uh, in terms of assessing what um, the health of a hemisphere under BTO conditions would be. This is certainly no in no way a healthy perfusion on the left side. Um, we very strongly believe in aggressive early management of vasospasm with balloon um, angioplasty if necessary. Uh, pharmacologic or balloon, I think. We're not here to debate this again, but in this case, I can't really see how anything other than aggressive angioplasty is gonna save this person. Um, and so we do that. Um, it's really like a stroke, like you go early, you go aggressive and don't wait for the heart attacks or pneumonias or whatever else comes with uh, trying to push medical management when um, you have, when, if it's not working. Um, bottom line is this is our working projection. We gave a rapamil here beforehand. Um, don't always have to do that. There is, um, I think a lot of good reasons not to, but in this case, I think there's reasons to do that. In fact, so we did, so that improved it a little bit, but um, then comes the balloon. And so this is again, a three by 10 transform. It's uh, one of good sizes for this sort of work. Uh, we did the A2, came down. This is some pictures of the A1. <clears throat> this is afterwards, the ipsilateral side has been plasty. Uh, obviously that's gonna help the left hemisphere. So we really need to get to the left, but this, anatomy here, if we go back a bit, these turns are not too favorable. We kind of get a preview of that when we were coiling this thing. However, um, it wasn't too bad to do this. And so we did get to the left A2. This is a like a usual synchro two soft wire, same balloon. And we do this, um, plasty the A2, then we came down, plasty the ACOM. And here is where things get a little bit interesting. You see this Configuration of the balloon. If you've seen this before, you know what this means. <laughs> you know what this means. If you don't, you want to remember that. Um, this is a particular configuration. 
Uh, it's like a waist. You see how like the balloon is not inflating in the middle. So uh, then we have to, so we did this and then we have to get into the other side. Now, here we had a lot of trouble uh, with the regular wires. And so we ended up crossing this with a, um, with a uh, um, hybrid, an 08 hybrid. This is a three by 10 transform balloon. So can you do that? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, you can coil an aneurysm like this with balloon assisted coiling. But what you can do, is you can take a three cc syringe, you can fill it with, it's even better to fill it with 100% contrast actually. But even if you do it two thirds, one third, and you inject slowly, you're gonna get to a point where the balloon is gonna partially inflate and that'll be decided by the pressure of the injection versus the resistance across the valve with the smaller than desirable wire. So this is not obviously in the IFUs, but um, this is what one can do. And so you can inflate it temporarily and achieve an, an angioplasty. Obviously uh, coiling, you know, keeping it steadily inflated ain't gonna work, but this is a way to do it. So uh, we plastied um, in this way, the MCA, uh, the M1 and the uh, left um, A1. And this is uh, at the end, you see that it's actually done pretty well. Here is the injection. Um, and this is actually a very good result as far as the angioplasty goes. It's a combination of pharmacology and balloon angioplasty. There's a minimal delay, not too bad. Uh, definitely way better than it was. Uh, this is a few weeks later, complicated course, still hematoma is resolving here. Um, the drain's been removed. See, this is like a little hole where the drain used to be. So she, this person is no longer drain dependent, which is, uh, Awesome. And uh, recovering. Now, um, <clears throat> we do want to go back. We want to look at that shape, right? This shape of the balloon, what is that? Now we're going to go forward uh, to this part two. Let's let that load. And that's going to tell us what that is. Um, again, that shape. Now, if you know what this is, again, you know. If you don't know what this is, this shape is actually, without being too dramatic, this is actually the shape of death. It's like death itself staring you in the face with this kind of picture. And uh, what it wants you to do is it wants you to keep inflating. If you keep inflating, here's what's gonna happen. Um, if you look at this picture, this is the picture at the end of our angioplasty. And the arrow is pointing to something very interesting. This is a little fenestration. It's a tiny ACOM fenestration. And so this whole time, when we had difficulty crossing into the left side, the wire and the balloon were inside this fenestration. And it's very, very small, but that's exactly what happened. If you look at this picture, it's a little bit small but the arrow is pointing to where the wire is. You see how the wire is really below the ACOM, the main ACOM itself. And so in fact, the wire and the balloon are in the fenestration and it's wasting across that. I have another case like this from a colleague where this became um, also apparent that this is a problem. And so this does not happen as rarely as you might think. ACOM fenestrations are not so rare. And so this look, is that look, I can't imagine that if we had ruptured this fenestration, how this person could have possibly survived that uh, unless it miraculously stopped bleeding. But given how things precarious were already, this is really very, very uh, treacherous situation. And it also tells us something that we personally like to use the compliant balloons. Um, there are people that still use non-compliant balloons for angioplasties because you can't really overinflate them too much. We don't do that. Number one, they're stiffer. Number two, um, you need different sizes to plastic different vessels. So you go back and forth um, and down. In this particular case, if you had a non-compliant balloon, they don't really do that. They just either don't inflate or they inflate to uh, what they're supposed to, whatever their diameter is. And I think that wouldn't have gone as well. So with a combination of some luck and some knowledge of what this looks like, um, we actually got away with it. So um, 
an important thing to keep in mind, um, not just for angioplasty, but when you're coiling these things, like when we were coiling this aneurysm, we were actually in the ACOM proper. But um, for the angioplasty part, this is what happened. So keep that in mind and um, best of luck to you and thank you for listening. <laughs>